This video was sponsored by Brilliant.org. In this Starship update, we'll discuss what to expect from this week's Starship presentation, Booster 4 and Ship 20 are prepared for stacking ahead of that presentation, and there's no shortage of progress on future vehicles as parts for Booster 8 arrive. Hey everyone, this is Ian Atkinson with NASA Spaceflight, here to give you an update on SpaceX's Starship facilities as of early February 2022. The Boca Chica site has been bustling with activity ahead of the Starship presentation. Crews are continuing to test the chopsticks, the two lifting and catching arms mounted on the launch tower. We saw the water bags return on January 30th, after a brief period of inspections and repairs following the last round of lifting tests. These devices are used to simulate the heavy and expensive loads that the chopsticks will need to lift in the future. After the bags were filled with water, the chopsticks were raised and lowered, ensuring that they could handle the added weight. The bags were then removed the following day. This may end up being the final major test of the chopsticks before their first vehicle lift. Booster 4 and Ship 20 are currently being prepared to be lifted onto the orbital launch mount for what will be the second full Starship stack. Booster 4's Raptor engines have recently been painted a dark gray, covering up the corrosion they've experienced from being outside in the salty air. Rocket engines usually aren't painted, so this was only done to make the vehicle look nicer ahead of the upcoming presentation. It's also another sign that the vehicle probably won't fly, or even see a static fire test. The booster's grid fins were unstrapped on February 1st, another sign that a lift was imminent. Booster 4 was lifted onto the orbital pad on February 6th. This lift was not accomplished using the chopsticks, but rather SpaceX's LR-11000 crane. Ship 20 will then be lifted atop Booster 4 in the coming days. And speaking of Ship 20, it was lifted off of Pad B on January 17th and moved near the orbital launch site. It has remained there as it awaits Booster 4's lift onto the orbital pad. However, that's not all that has happened at the launch site. On January 18th, the GSE-4 test tank was loaded with liquid nitrogen for a cryogenic proofing test. During this test, it ruptured, sending liquid nitrogen around the site. Whether or not the failure was intended has been a hot topic of debate in the spaceflight community, with no answer available. The remains of the tank were scrapped on February 2nd. At the production site, work has finally resumed on Ship 22. The vehicle's completed tank section resides in the mid-bay and is awaiting the attachment of its aft flaps. Assembly of Ship 22 was paused for an extended period of time towards the end of last year. Ship 21, notably, is still sitting outside the mid-bay, unfinished. Speaking of new hardware, a new smooth nose cone was spotted inside tent number 3, sporting flap attachment hardware. This points to this nose cone being flight ready and may be intended for Ship 24. Booster 7 is still being assembled inside the high bay. Currently, its methane and liquid oxygen tank sections are complete. All that's left is to attach the engine section and then connect the two tanks together. But Booster 7 isn't the only booster being worked on. Sections of Booster 8 have been spotted as well. Its forward dome was sleeved on January 26th, and several other parts have been spotted outside. These include the sump, which will funnel liquid methane from the fuel tank, and the transfer tube, which will then move the fuel to the engines. The wide bay has reached a new height, as its fourth level was started on January 29th. Based on height descriptions by Elon Musk, this may be the second to last level of the building. And finally, let's discuss the upcoming Starship presentation. Elon announced on Twitter that SpaceX will be holding a Starship presentation at Boca Chica this Thursday, February 10th at 8pm Central Time. Elon also stated that there will be a full Starship stack as a backdrop, confirming that we will see Booster 4 and Ship 20 return to the orbital launch mount sometime this week. While we don't know exactly what he will share or announce at this event, there are some things that would not be surprising to see, or at the very least, that I hope to see. Given that Raptor 2 is well into production and testing, videos of the new engine on the test stand would be great to see. Also, Elon has already shared a physics simulation of a super heavy booster landing on Twitter. The video, which is of a 29 engine booster, 
shows that the vehicle will initially fire nine engines for landing, before shutting down all but three for the final descent towards the chopsticks. Additional information on the launch and landing profiles would not be a surprise. There's been a lot of talk about how Starship will carry and deploy cargo, specifically its payload bay doors. In fact, we've already seen two test articles of the payload bay so far. Further details on what this mechanism will eventually look like could be shown off. Also, Jared Isaacman, who commanded and funded the Inspiration4 mission last September, may be involved with Starship. He and a few friends flew over Boca Chica on February 5th in two of his fighter jets. Even going as far as flying between SN15 and 16. Pictures and videos are released from the event, some from even inside SpaceX property, showing that Isaacman may have some involvement with Starship and that we could see him at the presentation. And finally, updates and information on how Starship will be built and operated at Cape Canaveral would be great to see. We already know they've broken ground on not only the Starship launch pad, but also a possible assembly area at Roberts Road. No matter what happens, it should be fun to get some new information and maybe some updated renders. And who knows, maybe there will be some surprises. We'll just have to wait and see. Thanks to Brilliant.org for sponsoring this video. Brilliant is a problem-solving website that lets you learn science, math, mechanics, and more using interactive methods. In fact, interactive learning is six times more effective than just watching a lecture video. With a wide variety of courses available, you'll find something you'll love no matter your skill level. I've personally been working on their astrophysics course, and I like how the lessons start off with simple reviews and examples and slowly build up to the more advanced topics. The lessons in the course break down several topics of astrophysics using everyday analogies and examples, making them accessible to anyone. You can check out Brilliant for free at brilliant.org slash NASA Spaceflight, or by clicking the link in the description. The first 200 viewers to use the link will even get 20% off an annual premium subscription. And that's all for this video. Thanks for watching and have a great week.